This is a video on the derivative. The plan is to start out by practicing finding the derivative of a function, f prime of x. And then after that, we're going to figure out how do you sketch the derivative of a function, f prime of x, if we're given the sketch of f of x. Then after that, we're going to see what is the relationship between differentiability and continuity. And then finally, we're going to say, how do we find a higher order derivative? We're going to call that f double prime of x or f triple prime of x or even higher. So that's a plan. So let's start out by finding f prime of x given f of x as an equation. So remember that the definition of the derivative is that f prime of x, the derivative of f of x, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So here's an example. Let's suppose that f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x. And we're asked to find f prime of x. So what do we do? We plug it into the formula. So notice that if I plug in x plus h into our function f of x, means everywhere we see an x, we put an x plus h. So instead of x here, this is x plus h. Instead of x in this denominator, this is x plus h. So we get x plus h plus 1 over x plus h, and then minus f of x. And f of x is x plus 1 over x. So it's minus x plus 1 over x divided by h. All right, now comes the challenging part, not the calculus. Now comes the algebra. And the best way of doing these, when you have two types of functions, an x and a 1 over x, is to literally split them apart. So the x gave us the x plus h, and it gave us this minus x. The 1 over x gave us the 1 over x plus h, and it gave us the 1 over x. So I'm going to split this into two pieces. And I can write it as a limit as h goes to 0 of the x plus h minus x part over h, and then plus the limit as h goes to 0 of the 1 over x plus h part minus 1 over x. All right, the first piece is easy, x plus h minus x. That's just h. So I can write limit as h goes to 0 of h. Now for the second part, I have a mixed fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by x times x plus h. That's the common denominator. So if I multiply x plus h by x times x plus h, I'm left with x. If I multiply 1 over x times x times x plus h, I'm left with x plus h. And then don't forget that we're subtracting x plus h, so it's very important that we go x minus parentheses x plus h and the parentheses. Otherwise, this doesn't work. The denominator, most important thing is don't mess with it. We're just multiplying by x times x plus h. So just leave it as h times x times x plus h. All right, now we simplify. So we have an x minus x, that's 0. And then we have a negative h. So what we get is we get First, h over h is just 1, and that limit is 1. And then limit as h goes to 0, now we have a negative h over h times x times x plus h. The h's cancel here. And what we're left with, we still have this 1. And then we have plus the limit as h goes to 0. The h's cancel, and the numerator becomes a negative 1. And the denominator becomes x times x plus h. Remember, once you cancel, that's when you plug in. So then we're going to plug in h equals 0, and we get still the 1. 
and then we have plus a negative, so that's a minus, 1 over x times x plus 0, which is just x squared. So we can say that the derivative of x plus 1 over x is 1 minus 1 over x squared. And that solves the problem. So that's how we deal with finding the derivative of a function when we're given the function algebraically. The next thing we will do is that if we're given a graph of a function y equals f of x, how do we sketch the derivative of that function y equals f prime of x? So here's kind of a step-by-step -step process that works pretty well. So step one is start out if there's any horizontal tangent lines. So look on the graph and see if it's flat anywhere. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, where does the graph go up? So if you're walking from left to right and you're walking on a trail, for example, and that's the graph, where are you going to be hiking uphill? And that's where the derivative will be positive. So that means the graph will be above the x-axis. If the graph goes down, so if you're hiking from left to right and you're walking downhill, then the derivative is negative. So we can think of the graph as being below the x-axis. If it's steep, that means that f prime of x is high if it's steep upwards. And if it's steep down, that means that f prime is low, far below the x-axis. If you have an asymptote, you still get an asymptote. But if you go from left to right and you go up to infinity, that means that it goes up to infinity still. And if you are going down to infinity, then that means we're way below the x-axis. And on the right-hand side, if we're coming from infinity, going down, that means we're going to go below the x-axis. And we're coming from negative infinity and go upwards, that means we're going to be going above the x-axis. And then finally, we're going to check for points where there is no derivative. And that's where things are going to jump. Maybe there'll be a hole, all kinds of things. And asymptotes also don't have derivatives. So that's going to be the plan. So now let's do an example. So here's an example. Y equals f of x is shown. So here's this beautiful graph, nice and smooth. It's got some low point, a high point, a low point, way up at the top and the bottom. And we want to sketch y equals f prime of x. So let's go step by step. The first thing I want to do is I want to say, well, where are there horizontal tangent lines? So a horizontal tangent line means that if you're hiking, then all of a sudden you get a point at which it's basically flat. You're at the bottom or you're at the top here. So the horizontal tangent lines happen right here when x is 0, happens right here a little before 1, and it happens over here a little bit after 2. If the tangent line is horizontal, then that means that the y prime value will be 0 because a horizontal line has slope 0. So what we can do is we can now plot the points of f prime of x where we had horizontal tangent lines. So I just put on the x-axis those three points. Okay, now let's see where is it going kind of up and where is it going down. So if I go kind of walking from the left, if I'm over here, notice I'm going downwards. If I'm going downwards, that means that the derivative is going to be negative, so it will be down there. And this is pretty steep downward, so it's going to be way down. OK, 
Okay, whereas over here, for example, I'm going upwards. So that means the derivative will be positive, but not that steep, so maybe around here. Then over here, the derivative is going to be negative because I'm walking downwards. So that means I'm going to be lower, below the x-axis, but not nearly as steep as this one. And then over here, I have the derivative is positive because the slope is going upwards. So that means the points will be up. And then over here, it's very steep, so it's going to be way up. So here's the points. So notice over here, it's way down. Over here, it's up, but not that much. Over here, it is down. And over here, it's up. And over here, it's really steep, so it's actually above where we can see. Not quite an asymptote, but it's kind of going to be like an asymptote. And now I can just connect the dots. I'm going to go like this. Do, 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 do. Hit right there, go like that, come down, come down, hit there, and then come up, come up, come up, come up, and then get steep. And here's the graph of y equals f prime of x. It goes up, 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 and then it goes down, 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 then it goes up, 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 hits the x-axis, and then keeps going up for good. So that's an example of how you sketch y equals f prime of x if we're given the graph of y equals f of x. Now let's do another example that has some different features. So now we have y equals f of x shown, and we want to sketch y equals f prime of x. So now y equals f of x is a piecewise function. It goes kind of up along a line, and then it jumps. There's holes on both of these sides. There's a dot at negative 1 because it's piecewise, and it's defined when x is negative 1. We're at 0. And then it goes flat until you get to x equals 0. And then you jump down. We have a hole at the top. We have a dot at the bottom. And then we go upwards. And then we suddenly go downwards. No holes or anything. Nice and con continuous at this point but it does go downwards, and then we jump, and then we go downwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the sketch of y equals f prime of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each piece. And the nice thing about this graph, even though it looks crazy, the pieces are line segments, and line segments have very well-defined slopes. So in particular, on this far left piece, from negative 3 to negative 1, the slope is positive 1. Remember, the derivative is the slope. So that means that between negative 3 and negative 1, the derivative is going to be up here at positive 1. So let's draw that. So I draw from negative 3 to negative 1, the derivative being positive 1. Notice it's horizontal because... If the derivative doesn't change, that means you stay horizontal. Okay, then notice at this point, it's not continuous. It goes, and then all of a sudden, it's flat. There's no derivative here. So it's going to be a hole at this point. And then here, between negative 1 and 1, it's horizontal. A horizontal line has slope 0. So the derivative is going to be down here on the x-axis. So let's draw that. And here we have it. So notice we're up at 1, and then we jump down to the x-axis until we get to the origin. And then we're going to jump over here, where it starts at negative 2 and then goes up to negative 1. And notice the slope again is positive 1. The derivative is the slope. It doesn't matter how low this is. What matters is what the slope is. And the slope is 1, so that means starting at negative 2, I'm going to be back up at 1 until I get to 1. So let's draw that. And we're going to put some holes there because, remember, it's not continuous. The derivative is not continuous. It went from being flat to being positively sloped. Then let's see what happens at 1, even though the function is continuous. We're going from 
positive slope suddenly to negative slope. So between one and two, the slope is gonna be negative one. So that means that the derivative will be down here at y equals negative one, or y prime equals negative one is our new axis. So I'm gonna draw this piece right here. And notice that the derivative jumps from one down to negative one because the slope jumps as I walk and then suddenly I walk down. So now we finish it off. Take a look. Now we're gonna go up here. We're jumping way up high, but the slope out from two to four beyond is negative one. So past two, the slope is still at negative one. Okay, now when you have a jump, the derivative doesn't exist. So I'm gonna keep a hole at two comma negative one, but the derivative stays at negative one because over on the left of two, I'm going downwards with slope negative one. On the right of two, I'm still going downwards with slope negative one. So that means that I draw the derivative which has slope negative one. And notice we're just gonna be negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. We have a hole here, but then we're still negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, and that's the derivative. So we now have the derivative of the function y equals f of x, which is an interesting different kind of piecewise defined function. And that is the graph when we have these piecewise functions. Okay, now let's look at the relationship between differentiability and continuity. So we saw, when we looked at the graph, like the one we just looked at, we saw that when our original function jumped, our f prime, also had a point of discontinuity. It jumped also, or sometimes it jumped, but then you had a hole, but either way, we lost continuity. We also saw kind of the idea was that if you have an asymptote, you keep an asymptote. So if we have a point that isn't continuous, then it's not going to be differentiable either. And we can look at the converse of that. And that says that if you have a function that is differentiable, then that function must also be continuous. So here's the theorem. Let f of x be differentiable at a value x equals c. Then f of x is continuous at x equals c. So let's give a little proof of that. So it's a little messy, but not too terrible. So what we want to do is we want to find out first if you have a differential function, does it even have a limit? Because to be continuous, you have to have a limit. So let's take a limit as x goes to a of f of x. And that limit can be rewritten, and this is kind of tricky. We can take f of x and we can subtract f of a, and we can add f of a. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a plus f of a. Okay, so that's a little trick, and that is subtracting and adding the same number and not changing anything. The other main math trick is dividing and multiplying by the same number. So I'm going to take this f of x minus f of a, and I'm going to divide by x minus a, and I'm going to multiply by x minus a, and you're always allowed to do that. And then we still have plus f of a. The reason I did that is that I have an f of x minus f of a, and I want to use the fact that f is differentiable. Well, the definition of the derivative has an f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. And that's why I wanted to divide by x minus a. But if I divide by x minus a, I also have to multiply by x minus a. 
Okay, then I can use a theorem about limits that says that you can take arithmetic and split it up. So I can split this up into three different limits. I can write this as the limit as x goes to a is this first piece, f of x minus f of a over x minus a, times the limit as x goes to a of the second piece, that's x minus a, plus the limit as x goes to a of the third piece, that's f of a. Now, let's just plug in. Well, the nice thing is that we know that f is differentiable. So that means we don't know what the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus a over x minus a is, but we know it's something, and I can call that f prime of a. It's a number. The limit as x goes to a of x minus a, well, I can plug in a. a minus a is just 0. So that limit is 0. The limit as x goes to a of f of a is just f of a. There's nothing to do there. There's no x in f of a. Well, f prime of a times 0 is just 0, and 0 plus f of a is f of a. So I've just proven that as f of x is differentiable, the limit exists. The limit as x goes to a of f of a exists. And not only does it exist, but it's equal to f of a. That was a definition of continuity, is that a function is continuous if the limit exists and if the limit as x approaches a of f of x not only exists, but is equal to f of a. So therefore, if f of x is differentiable at x equals c, then f of x is continuous at x equals c. And that always works. So there's our proof. And we have to do a proof. That's kind of part of calculus. You don't have to do so many, but I do. So to check for differentiability, well, from the last theorem, if the function's not continuous at a point, it's not differentiable at that point. Okay, that's what we just proved. Okay, but then we saw in the last example, we had that function that kind of looked like a V. It was continuous, but the problem is on the left-hand side, it went down. On the right-hand side, it went up. So we want to check for that. If you have some kind of V-shape type of function where you kind of, if you imagine walking along, you're walking with one slope and then suddenly your slope changes, okay? Even though you're walking along a continuous trail, the slope suddenly changes. A V is an example of that. So if it's a V-shaped or if it has a sudden change, so for, here's an example where right here, this is not going to be differentiable at negative 2 because it's not continuous. At x equals 0, it also won't be differentiable because as you're walking from left to right, you're going downwards and your slope is some negative slope. And then suddenly at x equals 0, it suddenly goes upwards. You have a sudden change of slope. And if you have a sudden change of slope, then it's not differentiable. So it's not differentiable at x equals 0. At x equals 1, there's a hole here. So even though the slope on the left and right is the same, there's a hole. And if it's not continuous, it's not differentiable. So it's not differentiable at x equals 1. Okay, And then after that, there's no problem. If you're walking on the trail, there's no continuity issues. You're not doing a sudden change of slope. You're just kind of moving along. So it's differentiable after x equals 1. The final thing we have today is to talk about higher order derivatives. So what that means is, what is the second derivative? We define the second derivative, and we write down f double prime of x by the derivative of the derivative. So it is f prime of x all primed. Okay, in Leibniz notation, we can write that as d squared y over dx squared being equal to d over dx of dy dx. We could talk about the third derivative. Well, the third derivative, that's f triple prime of x, is going to be equal to f double prime of x all primed. So it's the derivative of the second derivative. 
And in particular, we can define this recursively and say the nth derivative. So that's f, and you do a superscript with a paren, is pretty typical, of x, is equal to the n minus first derivative of x, all taken the derivative of. So you take the derivative of the n minus first derivative, and that gives you the nth derivative. So to get the 94th derivative, well, that's the derivative of the 93rd derivative, for example. So what we want to do is we want to look at some examples. So let's find the second derivative. So let's suppose that f of x is equal to x squared. Let's find f double prime of x. So I'm going to use the definition. So what we do is we need to first take the first derivative before we even think about taking the second derivative. So to take the first derivative, I use a limit definition. I take the limit as h goes to 0. And then where I see an x, I put an x plus h. So instead of x squared, I have x plus h squared. And then minus x squared. So that's f of x plus h minus f of x. And then all over h. And now it's time to do the hard part, which is algebra. So let's do some algebra. So x plus h quantity squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then we still have minus x squared. Well, the x squared minus x squared cancel. And I have a 2xh plus h squared. I can factor out the h. So I get an h times 2x. And then plus h times h. So that's why I have a 2x plus h factored out. And then still all over h. Then I can cancel the h's. And when I cancel the h's, I'm left with 2x plus h. Now, once I cancel, that means I get to plug in. So now it's plug in h equals 0. And if I do that, I get 2x plus 0, which is just 2x. That was the first derivative of f of x. So if f of x is x squared, then f prime of x is 2x. Now, I want the second derivative. So I have some choices. Okay, well, one thing I have to do is I have to find the derivative of 2x. Well, one choice is I can say, well, I can always use the limit definition and find it. But I can do a little more ingenious way. And that is to just look at it and say, well, hey, y equals 2x is a line. A line with slope 2. And the derivative is a slope. So that means the derivative of 2x and the derivative of the first derivative is the second derivative. So the derivative of 2x is just 2 because it's the slope of the line y equals 2x. So f double prime of x is 2. And that's all I have to do. So the second derivative of f of x equals x squared is equal to 2. All right, just a note, um, we'll do this later in the class, but the idea is that the first derivative kind of gave you the tangent line. In physics, it gives you the velocity, how fast something's going. The second derivative gives you acceleration. Okay, and acceleration in physics is how fast the velocity changes. So how much you're speeding up or slowing down. And that's the second derivative. Very important, the second derivative, because it tells you how fast you're speeding up or slowing down, or in other words, what is the acceleration? So if f of x is x squared, then the acceleration, f double prime of x, is 2. So that's all I have to say for this particular section. I hope it all went well for you. And if you have any questions, you can always ask. Thank you very much.